We are back live from the correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar command center. No, I'm kidding. Colon man, comma, space, Michael, full stop, has a great question. One of the best questions I've had on here so far. And he says, articles, I guess that you are a man because it says man. I don't want to insult anybody's gender belief system. Articles and indefinite articles determiners are also considered modifiers. What is causing these to be seen as adverbs instead? The fiction actors will scream up and down that they are not adverbs. Well, first of all, man, Michael, you have to know what an adverb is. What is an adverb? I will wait for your finite mean of what an adverb is using correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. So if we're gonna use this as an opportunity for teaching, yes, the parse of it would literally be no verb, but what is it? What is your correct sentence structure finite mean, your closure on adverb that you would include in a document contract postal vessel core venue in your dictionary? What is an adverb? In other words, it would say for the adverb of the finite mean is, and then you would give that closure. What is it? What is your cognition of what an adverb is? You have to have that in place first before you walk into these, these venues. Because if you don't know what an adverb is, how do you expect them to know what an adverb is? You have to be able to give closure to them. If they're screaming and jumping up and down, be like, all right, bro, I got you, I got you. I'll tell you what an adverb is. This is what an adverb is, and this is how you can certify it. And this is how it's a modifier. And you would explain that. Now, as far as these other things, articles and indefinite articles, determiners, personally, I don't give a shit what, what those are. They mean nothing to me. That's adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, nonsense. That's plain English fiction, babble, nonsense. All part of the goofy English language. What I'm concerned with are these. And I can tell you, uh, what, what do you say here? Your question is, what is causing these to be seen as adverbs instead? I can tell you the answer to that question very quickly. But first, I want to know what your closure on an adverb is in the context of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, because you have to have that. It's a high level question, no doubt about it. So I expect nothing less than a high level correct sentence structure, finite mean from colon, man, comma, space, Michael, period. Welcome everybody else. I'll wait for Michael to put his answer in the chat if he so chooses. And if he doesn't, then I will just give the closure. Bottom line, you have to have closure on all of those things, what they are, what their functions are, why they do the things they do. You have to be able to do that and articulate that to another contract party in a situation under duress possibly and be able to syntax and have closure on it. Because if you don't know what makes an adverb an adverb, then how the hell can you syntax a document with correctness? How can you tell someone else um, that they're using incorrect grammar when you yourself don't know or have closure on what correct grammar actually is? All right, so I'm gonna uh, give colon man comma, space, Michael, period, a break here. And I'm, I'm just going to give the answer. What is causing these to be seen as adverbs instead? It comes from the tangibility or non-tangibility of the word, Michael. When you look a word up in the etymology dictionary and you, you find, you go to the earliest nativity root meaning of the word, there are a few red flags that credential a word as tangible or non-tangible. And the way to find the red flag for the non-tangible words is when you look up a word and it tries to give closure to itself by using itself or using other non-tangible words. That's, it's that simple. What makes an adverb an adverb? There is no tangible contract with what that is. It's pure modification. 
You don't know what that is the way you know what a cup is. You don't know what a the is or an a or an an the way you know what a cup is. And you can use those examples in those venues and explain this to those people. I'm pretty sure they're not going to want to hear it, but they may hear you out a little bit. Especially if you know what you're doing, you got your flag mechanics, your postal mechanics, your banking mechanics, your grammar mechanics, all your ducks in a row. They might have to sit there and listen to you. <laughs> but that's the closure. That's what causes these to be seen as adverbs. Because there is no part of speech in correct sentence structure that is an article or is an indefinite article or a determiner. Look at all the no contract in the words in that that Michael put there. Articles, no contract. Indefinite, no contract. Articles, no contract. Determiners, no contract. They're all no contract BS. <laughs> so that's my closure on it. You can check out my Parse playlist uh, and also syntax playlist on multiple videos on tangibility and non-tangibility of words and how um, my tutor, Raven, and myself sort of crafted this baseline that everyone could come in and participate with so that everybody's syntax would be consistent across the board with closure rather than having to say, well, golly, that's not on Russell's list of adverbs. That's not an adverb. Or, hey, that's an adverb because Russell said so. No. The closure comes from a tangible source, a place that can be certified, verified, cross-referenced, everything. And everybody can participate with it. That way, if you learn the method that I teach on my channel, your syntaxing will be congruent with everyone else's syntaxing that uses it. And you will be able to prove it when called upon to do so. If you follow that method and those mechanics. So great question. Awesome. I can always count on Michael to bring the heat. He's been showing up lately. Pretty cool. All right. Anybody else out there with any questions? If not, I'm going to close this down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, make this a members only video and then I'll probably download it and edit out the big empty spot at the beginning where I had a, got a phone call and uh, I'll republish it to the public and edited version of it so that everybody can benefit from it if they so choose or someone else can step up to the plate and ask a question okay here we go for the finite mean oh you're missing a hyphen there Razvan, for the finite mean, oh my goodness, Razvan, what's going on here, bro? You missed the hyphen between finite and mean, which throws the whole thing into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, and then you put of the and an adverb in parentheses, which means it's not there. So it literally means for the finite mean of the is with the modification. You have no fact after your of the because you put adverb in. in Parentheses. So that is not a correct sentence structure. Um, great effort, though. So Michael says, for I concur, the issue or contradiction I see is with the closure of what tangible is. For example, the fiction system claims that carefully, quickly, suddenly, etc., are tangible, even though that is. Is that your experience with it, Michael? Because I have never heard the fiction system use the word tangible contract in any scenario. Matter of fact, I bet that word's not even in, well, before I open my mouth, I'm going to look it up. I'm betting that the word tangible is not in Black's Law Dictionary. I'm going to look it up. Okay, here we go. It is in there. It is in there. Hush my mouth. Here it is. Tangible. Something that has form and exists physically and is discernible.
by one or more senses. Now, that's a that's a pretty good adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun um, articulation of what tangible is. However, in correct sense structure, it's a little bit different because if it says it's discernible by one or more senses, let's say it's discernible by two or more senses because two is certification. And if you can credential something as tangible or non-tangible by using two or more senses, you, that's certification. So with correct sentence structure, you can certify things such as love as tangible contract. Because love is tangible contract. Michael, do you love your children and your wife, your family? You know what that means. You have a tangible contract on with love. Is your family lovely? Perhaps, but lovely is not, never going to be tangible contract. I can love, but how can I lovely? <laughs> and that goes into the parse of L-Y which I did a couple videos on that, how L-Y is the most poisonous suffix in the whole of the grammar because it literally deadens the tangibility of a word. And I go into great depth and detail in my uh, most recent video on L-Y, which was a few months ago. But again, I don't really care what the fiction system claims. I don't care because if I have my flag mechanics in place, the one by 1.9, Title IV grammar flag and my constitution in pla place in correct sentence structure giving closure to that flag. I have my postal mechanics in place. I've done my grammar correctly and my banking correctly, posted my roads co with correctness. I don't care what they say. It has nothing to do with what they say. They have no jurisdiction over me or under me or beside me. It's just me in a geometric level playing field with the flag of the land during the time of the contract. So that's why it's so important to have all of those mechanics in place. Flag, postal, banking, grammar. If you have any of those missing, you're going to be missing something. And it probably won't turn out the way you think it is. There is no mitigation or arguing with the fiction when you use correct sentence structure. Things just are what they are. You have taken command of the well of the court, the geometric level playing field, and you are inviting them to come with you on that geometric level playing field, which they will not do. They won't. I mean, they might, but there's like, you see this? There's like this, an eighth of this is about the chance that you will see them come onto the geometric level playing field with you because they don't know the grammar. But yeah, I'm glad that helped, Michael. That's the certification. You can certify a fact for your, like, for example, I have some friends that are, they're very strong with their spiritual uh, navigations. Like some of them participate with the concept of a God. So God is a fact for them because for whatever reason, they can certify it with two or more of their senses. However, if they want to contract with me using this God concept, I can participate with it as a concept in someone else's mind. But for me, God is not a fact. Because I can't certify it the way I can certify a mug or even the word love or like. There's no certification there through senses. None of my senses ever can detect or credential such a thing. It's all imagination. It's all assumption, presumption as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, other people can do what they want. I, I honor that. I make jokes about it sometimes, but I do honor it. That's fine. If they can do that for themselves, that's cool. But just like those... Those individuals out there, you know who I'm talking about, who are out there right now trying to force the rest of the world to participate with their ideas of gender and sexuality and all that stuff. 
that's that's the feeling I get from people that try and go knocking on doors, spreading the good word of this or that or the third. Don't waste your breath. Not here anyways. <laughs> Not worried about it. Michael, also, if you go to my parts of speech playlist, I have a whole last video on the advert, giving my closure to it, the finite meaning of it, and its actual function in the context of this technology. Could you call time a sense? I don't participate in, in correct sense structure. There is no time. Time is no contract. I will not, you will not find time in any of my correct sentence structure contracts. In correct sentence structure, it's only the continuum or the now space, which I don't use the word now space either in correct sentence structure because now is non tangible contract. So I don't use the word time. I use the word continuum. I don't know if the continuum began somewhere. I don't know if it ends somewhere. I just know that it continues and it works fine that way of correct sentence structure. Taking jurisdiction with the continuum, not over the continuum, because I don't want to be over the continuum. I want to be with the continuum, with the flow, how things are flowing. Go with the flow. And, I, and that's the thing about this stuff, friends and neighbors. It's going with the flow. If you do this stuff every day and you actually do something with it, you create document contract, postal vessel court venues. You go into this venue or that venue, test it out, so on and so forth. You only get better and better at it. You only get better and better, more efficient at articulating this stuff and teaching it to other people that want to learn it in the now, in the continuum, on the spot. The more you do it, the better you get at it. And if you do it every day, you can't help but be good at it. You hear how this stuff rolls off my tongue. It's because I say it all the time. <laughs> And if you don't, you're going to be stuttering around like you see, you know, you, you, you see these Russell J. Gould videos and these other people making videos, Mark, lowercase k and whatever. And they try and say correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. They have trouble saying it. They flub it. Why? Because they're probably not using it every day. I'm not saying they aren't or they are. It's my guess. It's a knowledge cultivated guess going by what I see and hear to a certification of their performances in the public, however rare they might be. I don't think either of those guys really go into the public anymore. Not like this. Like I'm literally in the public right now. Anybody can send a comment. I see there's 12 people watching this. Any of you can send a comment, ask a question. I'll ask whatever you want me to answer. If I have the answer, I don't have all the answers. But I have a pretty good majority of the answers when it comes to the grammar. I'm pretty confident of that. Well, bin comes from B, doesn't it, Michael? So the root of B would be the same root of bin. It's just that when you syntax it in a scenario, it would be syntax as tangible, but tangible in the past tense. So it would either be a 2.8, a 3.8, or a 4.8, depending upon what's modifying it. Well, yeah, it could be a 3.8 if it comes in front of, like it says, been there. That would be adjective past tense pronoun. But if you say, I've been, now it's adverb dangling participle verb. You see, it could be either uh, adjective, verb, or pronoun, because tangible contract words cannot be and will not be adverbs. Quick bonus note, B comes from the same root as is and are. So that's why is and are are tangible as well. It means to exist, to grow. And again, as I said, you do this stuff every day. It's just there and it can only get better. And you only streamline it like I try to streamline it, distill it down to its simplest form and continue sharing videos 
with everyone out there doing different angles of the grammar, probably way better articulated than I was doing two or three years ago. Um, because the more you do something, you better you can't help but get better at it. That's why I do what I do. Beside, before, belong. Do you have a question, Michael? Do you have access to an etymology dictionary? Because if you're asking me if those are tangible or non-tangible, the way that you would credential that is to look it up in a etymology dictionary, in an etymology dictionary. Like if I'm just looking at a word like before, I'm seeing a non-tangible contract word. Now, of course, I'm going to look it up to make sure. And I'm looking at it right now before adverb preposition. So those are two red flags to me. Hmm, looks like it's non-tangible contract because adverbs are non-tangible, prepositions are non-tangible. In front of, in former times, in the presence of, in front of, in time or position, by, and in for, before, in front of. So it's not the thing, it's in front of the thing. B4, no for, F-O-R-E, non-tangible contract as well because it's future tense, like forecast. So there you go. You can look up the other ones yourself. Right. You know, I found that texting with toes is actually easier than with thumbs. Try that one. Actually, just text using your psychic ability. Try that once. But yeah, go ahead and look those up. Like I would look at beside and belong. And I would have to say that those are tangible contracts just by looking at them. I don't know that. Don't quote me on it. I'd have to look them up. It looks like it says no side and no long, but the BE does not negate the tangibility of the word. I know that side is tangible. I know that long is tangible, but four is not. So there you go. There's your answer. Beside, tangible. Before, non-tangible. Belong, tangible. You just have to look it up. And the more you look it up, the more you will remember the particles that are tangible and the particles that are non-tangible. And you'll be able to rattle those things off in any scenario and be able to direct people to your closure as to why you're saying the things you're saying. You have provided continuance of the evidence that anyone can find. There's no secret texts, no hidden classified documents. It's on etymologyonline.com for Pete's sake. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Special thanks to Man Michael for the great questions and the great conversation. I do appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10- to 15-minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like. And I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Uh, hit the Subscribe button. Hit the Like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.